today we'll be discussing about a chapter called fraction that is on unit 6 page number 63 so before we begin this chapter let us first understand what a fraction is so I'll give you an example and from that example it will be very clear to you what a fraction is so <clears throat> consider that a father brought a piece of cake for the children in the family so there are four children in the family and the father wants the cake to be divided among the children. So, this cake is divided into four equal parts. So, each cake will be sufficient for the children. So, this share will be for one child, another for the second child, third and fourth. So, now we have to value it. In the other classes, in the lower classes, we have learned the full value that is one, two, three. But in this class, we learn the value less than one. And that is fraction. So the value of this part of cake will be one by four. Now you may be wondering how this four came from. Actually, this four is the number of the equal parts the whole cake was divided into. And this one is your share, the person who is going to eat this part of a cake. And the upper number is called the numerator. And the lower number is called the denominator. So always remember that when we discuss about a fraction, it should have a number in this form. That is the numerator and the denominator. And that is here 1 by 4, where 1 is the numerator and 4 is the denominator. I hope you all are clear with this. So each part is a fraction of the whole cake. So we have four fractions of cake here. One fraction, second fraction, third fraction, and fourth fraction. So I hope you are clear with what a fraction is. Now let us flip to the exercise quotients. <clears throat> that is on page number 64. So question number one of page number 64. Let me read the question for you. It is, shade the shapes to show the fractions. Now we have to shade the shape given in the quotients. I will not be doing all the four figures here, but just one. All the answers are given on the PDF file, so you refer that. So I'll do the first one. The figure looks something like this. And just below the figure, a fraction is given, 1 by 4. <clears throat> so now you have to shade this value in this figure. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 parts. That is why the denominator is showing number 4. And 1 means we have to shade any one of the part of the whole figure. You can do here, 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 anywhere. You can do as you like. So I'll do here. This way, you cover the whole part by shading. So this represents 1 by 4 of the whole figure. I hope you are clear with this. Now, question number 2. Name the numerator and denominator in the fraction 5 by 12. So question number 2, a value is given that is 5 by 12. So this is a fraction and the question is asking you to highlight the numerator and denominator of this fraction. So like I have explained to you in the first phase, it is very simple. The first upper number is always known as the numerator and the second lower number is always known as the denominator. So in the answer, you can either write 5 is the numerator. And 12 is the denominator. Okay, so that's it. Now let us learn exercise number 3. That is, circle the proper fractions. So now a new term is there in the question that is proper fraction. So before we do this sum, 
Let us first know what is proper fraction. So, proper fractions are those fractions whose numerator is less than the denominator. For example, 2 by 5. So this is also a fraction, but it comes under proper fraction because the low upper number is lower than the lower number. That is, the numerator is less than the denominator. So this kind of fractions comes under the proper fractions where the upper number is less than the lower number. Let us do the sums now. In the questions, it is 5 by 9. Then 13 by 8. Then 2 by 7. Then 15 by 4. 10 by 3, 3 by 8. <clears throat> Let's do this one, okay? So, this is the quotient that is 5 by 9, 13 by 8, 2 by 7, 15 by 4, 10 by 3, and 3 by 8. So, from this question, we have to identify which are the proper fractions. And I told you that proper fractions are always in that figure where the upper number is less than the lower number. That is, numerator has to be smaller than the denominator. So let us find out. First one, 5 by 9. It is clearly understood that the numerator is less than the denominator. So this comes under proper fraction. Next one, here you see the numerator is greater than the denominator. So it comes under improper, we'll discuss in the next question. This one, here the numerator is less than the denominator, so this comes under proper fraction. Next one, 15 by 4, no. 10 by 3, no. 3 by 8, yes. Why? Because in these three fractions, all the numerators are less than the denominator. So this 3 comes under proper fractions. Now question number 4, that is, circle the improper fractions. <clears throat> In question number 3, we have discussed about proper fractions. Now let us know what is improper fractions. They have the same concept but just the opposite. Example, <clears throat> here you see, <clears throat> here the numerator is greater than the denominator. So such kind of fraction comes under improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. But in the previous questions, we have learned that the upper number was less than the lower number and that comes under proper. But in this question, the upper number has to be greater than the lower number and that will come under improper fraction. Let us get into the exercise now. <coughs> question number four. <coughs> So the question is 2 by 5 comma 7 by 3 comma 5 by 2 comma 10 by 15 comma 1 by 8 comma 20 by 17. So in this question we have to identify which are the improper fractions. I have given you the explanation there. Let us use the same concept. <clears throat> Here you see, 2 by 5. The numerator is less than the denominator, so it doesn't come under improper fraction. So we'll ignore this one. You see here, 7 by 3. The numerator is greater than the denominator, so this number obviously comes under improper fraction. Here also you see, the numerator is greater than the denominator, so this also will come under improper fraction. <clears throat> Here you see, the numerator is less than the denominator, so we'll ignore this one. <clears throat> Here also we'll ignore, since the numerator is less than the denominator. Here, the last one. The numerator is greater than the denominator, so this also will come under improper fraction. Okay, let us learn question number 5 now. Write three proper fractions with denominator 11. 
So in these questions we have to form such three fractions where the denominator has to be 11. Not more than 11 or less than but exactly 11. So first number 5. Remember that these three fractions which we are going to answer all the three should be having 11 as the denominator. So to make it easy just write 11 to avoid confusion. So in these three fractions, all each of the denominators have 11. So you put any number making sure that it should be less than this one. Then only it will come under proper fractions having denominator as 11. So let us just put here 5, 6 and 7. So this will be the answer for question number 5 where we have three proper fractions with denominators 11. Now let us do question number 6, that is, write 3 improper fractions with numerator 15. So, question number 6. Here the only difference we have is, we have to put all the 3 numerators as 15. Whereas, in the previous question, the denominators were asked to be 11. So here, for your easiness, let us put 15 beforehand as the numerator to avoid confusion. So now there is no hard rule that the lower number has to be 15. No, we have to make it improper. So make sure this should be less than the numerator. So you put any number, be it like 9 or be it like 8 or be it like 7. So this tree comes under improper fraction where all the numerators are 15. Question number 7. Write three equivalent fractions for each of the following. So now let us first understand what are equivalent fractions. Let us learn with these three examples. So in the first piece of cake, in the first day your share was the half part of the whole. So which represents? 1 by 2. Why 2? Because the whole cake was divided into two parts, so it is 2. And since you have one share of the whole part, then you get 1. So here 1 by 2 was the first share of the first day. And second day, the same cake was further divided into four parts. And now your part, which you got on the first day, was divided into two equal parts. And that represents 2 by 1, 2, 3, and 4. On the third day, the same cake was divided into 6 parts. So now your part was divided into 1, 2, 3. 3 of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. six. Here you see, all the fractions are represented by different number, but your share was not affected because 1 by 2. It was the first day of your share. In the second day also it was same share. But what happened here? It was made into two parts of your part. The value is same just the numbers are different. Third day also your part was same but just that it was divided into three parts. But the value remains same. Only numbers are different. So those examples it comes under equivalent fractions where your quantity of the cake was same except the value representing the quantities are different. So that comes under equivalent fractions. Let us do the exercises now. Question number one. It is 3 by 5. Three by five. So now we have to form three equivalent fractions for each of the following. So you have two steps to form equivalent fractions either by multiplying both numerator and denominator or either by dividing both uh, numerator and denominator that is up to you. you. Either you go for division or multiplication but in this method we'll just go for multiplication as it will be easy for you. So let us form three equivalent fractions of 3 by 5. First one. Into, into. Let us start with 2. So give 2 both up and down. It comes to 3, 2 times is 6. And 5, 2 times are 10. 
next so we have formed one equivalent fraction of this one next one repeat the same thing 3 by 5 into into now it was 2 make it 3 and 3 so 3 times 3 is 9 and 5 times 3 are 15 the last one that is same thing you repeat 3 by 5 into into 2 3 and 4 equals to 3 fourths are 12 and 5 fourths are 20 so in this way we have formed three equivalent fractions of this quotient in the same way you, you do please question number two three and four all the steps are easy you represent any values accordingly that will form a given fractions of the following quotients. Thank you. We'll learn the other halves in the next class. So keep watching the videos. Stay safe. Take care.